Hey everyone, I'm Kim, the mom boss behind Emery and K. Welcome back to my channel. Today's simple tutorial is going to be this beautiful printed vinyl and glitter basket weave. If I can do it, so can you. Let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pick out the tumbler that you're going to use. I'm using a 20 ounce skinny from Stainless Depot. Then you're going to go to Ellie's Crafty Co. and you're going to grab the basket weave template. I will have her website and a discount code linked in the description box. When you upload this into your software, you're going to actually get four templates with this. So you're going to want to go ahead and ungroup them and remove the ones you're not going to use. Today we're going to be doing the one that has the three... Um, weaves or however you would describe it the one on the top right once those are resized we're going to go ahead and cut them on our printed vinyl i'm using pink petals from the glitter guy then you're going to cut on the same exact template your tacky tape which is the double-sided adhesive sheets from the glitter guy i love this stuff it is paper backed and so easy to work with while those were cutting i went ahead and prepped my tumbler like i said i'm using a 20 ounce skinny from hog i gave it a light sand washed it dried it and then painted it with a light pink spray paint i want to say this is candy pink from rustoleum but i will double check and put it in the description box alternatively if you don't have a light pink spray paint white will work too your glitters would just be a little bit lighter so now we're going to go ahead and wrap our tumbler in our tacky tape template that we cut out. So many T's in one, one sentence there. <laughs> but I like to wrap it around my cup, get my seam and everything all lined up, make sure it's straight. I do prefer sewing clips to hold it in place, but I couldn't find them. So I just use a little piece of tape and that worked just as well. So I like to tape down one side, pull off about half an inch of the backing on the opposite side, lay it on my tumbler, double check my seam here, and then I'm going to carefully pull the backing away as I use my vinyl squeegee to firmly press it onto my tumbler. And after you get your tumbler wrapped, you want to pick it up, kind of spin it around in good lighting to check and see if there are any kind of little bubbles under your tacky tape. If there are, just use your weeding tool and just poke them gently and you can squeeze the air out. Now, once our our tumbler is wrapped in our tacky tape we're going to move on to our printed vinyl and so like I showed you guys we cut our printed vinyl out on the same exact template as we did our tacky tape and there are some marks on my tacky tape that's just my numbers so I know where I want to put my glitter um, but we'll get to those when I do my glitter so to put on your printed vinyl you're going to want to remove the pieces of your tacky tape where you're putting your printed vinyl now, I know you're like, oh my gosh, a sticky cup, sticky vinyl. If you mess up and your vinyl's a little bit crooked when you first put it on, you can carefully pull it up and adjust it. You'll see I end up doing that on this tumbler a time or two. Alternatively, if you do not take off that paper backing on the tacky tape and you lay your printed vinyl directly on that paper backing and you need to pull your vinyl and reposition it for any reason, you will pull the paper off the backing and like the top layer and I feel like I'm not articulating that <laughs> very well um, but kind of like if you were to put a piece of tape on a piece of paper and pull it off and you kind of end up with like this little bit of paper that you've ripped off onto your tape if that makes sense anyway long story short you will end up ruining your piece of vinyl because the adhesive will have um, like paper remnants stuck all over it and you don't want that so that's very important that you pull off the tacky tape piece wherever you're putting your printed vinyl so we're going to carefully go through and i'm putting my printed vinyl on the larger kind of triangle diamond pieces on this tumbler and if I end up with any little tiny bubbles, I will take my weeding tool or my X-Acto knife and I will just trim them. Now when I get to this part, like with these thinner kind of V's in between my weaves where I'm putting my printed vinyl, I like to use just a scrap piece of like vinyl backing to put the ends on so I can line up the little point in the middle perfectly and then lay down each side one at a time. That way my vinyl's not just like aimlessly floating around or sticking to um, random places on my tumbler, if that makes sense. So I am going to speed this clip up so that you guys can kind of watch it and just, I think it's easier to watch and see what I'm doing instead of having me like yak your ear off all the way through. I will apologize in advance for my melon being <laughs> in the camera. Um, I've said it before, but it's so hard to lay vinyl or like layer things with a camera and a big light in your face. So I apologize for my um, head and all my gray hairs, but we will go ahead and get all of our little vinyl pieces laid on and then we'll get to move on to the sparkle.
Now that all our printed vinyl is on there, we're going to move on to glitter. All of my colors are, of course, from the Glitter Guy. You can use Emery and K to save when you check out. I'm using Tickle Me, Bubblegum, Shortcake, this is Patty Cakes, and Dirty Little Secret. So I did mark off where I wanted each color beforehand. I did this for a few reasons, so that I could be a little bit organized as I was putting my glitter on and as far as how I wanted my colors to be laid out, like light and dark and stuff. I also did it so that I wouldn't get confused and mess up with these weaves. So you can do that or you can just go straight in and not mark it off. That's totally up to you and whatever is easiest. So I should have done this before I pulled my tacky tape to glitter, but I forgot. Um, if you have any little bits of vinyl that are kind of hanging over, so as you're putting your printed vinyl on, it's super stretchy. You might pull it a little bit too hard and it lays over your tacky tape a little bit. No big deal. Just go in with your X-Acto knife and trim those little pieces right at the seam nice and carefully. And as you pull those strips of tacky tape, uh, those little pieces of printed vinyl will come right up and that way all your lines are nice and smooth. Once all of those little overlay spots of vinyl are trimmed, you're gonna go ahead and continue to remove all the pieces of tacky tape for each correlating glitter. So it's important that you remember to always glitter with any tacky tape design from the darkest glitter to the lightest. That way nothing is mixing and it's not uh, affecting your design at all. So there are a few places on my Tumblr and I'm sure there will be on yours as well, where the vinyl overlays on the edges of the tacky tape just a little bit. If that happens to you, don't worry, just carefully pull your tacky tape strip. It won't rip your vinyl or anything, and then gently just run your finger right over the edge of your vinyl and make sure it's pressed on well before you apply your glitter. That's kind of inevitable um, that your seams overlap a little bit in some places, but the um, vinyl isn't so sticky that you won't be able to carefully pull the paper backing from the tacky tape from underneath it. So we're going to continue to go through. If you have any little spots of vinyl that you missed while trimming, like I did, just trim those as you work through. We are going to get the rest of our glitter colors on. We're going to give it a good coat of our sealer. We will put a coat of epoxy on it. Mine needed one. Yours might need two. That totally depends so that your cup is nice and smooth. And then after that, we're going to do pinstripes. Now, pinstripes are optional. I just think they really amp up the look on this tumbler. If you want to forego the pinstripes and skip them, just epoxy your cup until it's smooth and then you'll be finished. But if you want to do pinstripes like I'm going to do, you're going to grab a piece of vinyl that coordinates with your printed vinyl and your glitter colors. So for my pinstripes, I chose this really pretty kind of raspberry pink color and I apologize. I have no idea where this vinyl came from. I have just a huge bin of vinyl and this was in there and <laughs> I don't remember where it came from, so I'm really sorry. But any kind of pink that coordinates with the printed vinyl, you could do a lighter pink, a darker pink. Alternatively, you could do white, you could even do black. Anything that just coordinates with your printed vinyl, you can get kind of creative here too as far as what color to use. So I sized my strips 11 and a half inches by 0 0.07. And originally I cut out a dozen. I had to cut out a few more. So I would recommend cutting out like 18. That way you have an extra strip or two in case you mess up and you don't have to stop in the middle like I did and go cut out some more. So as far as laying on pinstripes, the process is super simple. I found a few things that I feel make it easier to get my pinstripes on straight and it also doesn't take forever. So I don't use transfer tape, I just pull off my strips one at a time and you saw there I kind of picked it up with my hands and like almost stuck it to like my forearm so that my strip wasn't just like floating around sticking to anything. I find that the easiest way for myself as far as laying on my pinstripe, I like to push the edge down and then I kind of just like to carefully pull the vinyl and gently roll my cup at the same time and just let the vinyl kind of fall where it may. I find if I get too into trying to make my pinstripe perfectly straight and all that, that I get like those weird kind of little wonky waves and stuff um, in my pinstripe and then it, it looks weird. So I just kind of gently roll the cup and let the vinyl fall where it may. As far as doing the little tips on like each line, those kind of sharp little triangle edges, uh, I just line up the first piece right on the edge and then the second piece I will overlap and I will match the corners. Um, and I hope that makes sense, but you kind of 
once you do it, you'll understand a little bit. And again, I apologize for my melon always being in the camera, but this is, this is just the life we're living here. <laughs> so I'm going to continue to go through and I'm going to pinstripe all of my areas. Make sure that you double and triple check it uh, because it's very easy to over miss, especially those little sections in the weaves. Just take your time making sure that you are doing um, the pinstripes to match your vinyl. Like don't end your pinstripes early or go late, uh, especially again in those weaves. So we will just go ahead and go through and finish our pinstripes. Once the pinstripes are finished, you're going to go ahead and do two more coats of epoxy until your cup is nice and smooth and you will be finished. I did decide to add a little splash of cherry ice mica powder into my final coat of epoxy to give my cup a really beautiful little shimmer, but that part is totally optional. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful, maybe a little bit inspirational. If you did, I would love a thumbs up on my video. If you want to see more tutorials in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, happy crafting!